As German scholar Nicholas Pevsner pointed out, the distinction between a standard building and architecture is architecture's ability to escape the vernacular and respond to or challenge paradigms. Timeless architecture, as an art form, should provide social commentary about universal values that either reinforces or challenges our culture. Historically, the narrative of architectural canon has primarily been told from a white male Eurocentric perspective, and at times, the architectural discourse has unfortunately fallen victim to racism, sexism, and misogyny. Caryatids of Roman architecture suggested the objectification of women. Adolf Luce blatantly suggested the idea of racial superiority. Architecture has always tended to reflect the zeitgeist and its effects on social values. Through multiple rounds of paradigm shifts, we evolve our culture by discarding values that serve us no longer to fit into transient climates of correctness. During the 1960s to 70s, we began to examine the dynamics of racial and gender identity. As a result, awareness was drawn towards generally underrepresented minorities, such as women and African Americans. Although it is not without resistance and reluctance for change, the architecture that emerged from that period did indeed become a turning point in enriching the diversity of architectural canon. Evidence of this resultant cultural shift is the National Museum of African American History and Culture by David Ajay that confronts historical racial dynamics with honesty and reverence. As one of the essential instigators of this social and cultural shift, Maya Lin and her Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. became a linchpin that best crystallizes the attitudinal changes in the discussion of race, gender, and identity. Maya Lin, who was still an undergraduate student at Yale School of Architecture, anonymously won the design competition for the memorial on the National Mall. The memorial is a 500-foot-long V-shaped wall of polished black granite that is half buried in the earth. Dedicated on November 13, 1982, inside on the wall are names of more than 58,000 young Americans who were killed or declared missing in action during the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War was, in simple terms, a proxy war between the United States and Communist Vietnam. America's interest was to suppress the spread of socialism and as such, dives headfirst into a 21-year conflict that they could neither sustain nor win. However, this harsh reality was hidden from the public, and the government continued to send troops to fight what was mainly a symbolic war that the government didn't want to admit to having lost. As Army veteran and author of A Rift in the Earth, James Reston puts it, the Vietnam War forced Americans to make difficult choices about whether or how to serve their country. The issue pitted soldiers against protesters, sons against fathers, citizens against politicians, friends against friends. War is a dubious and possibly immoral enterprise. The internal and external conflict left American society with a desperate need for reconciliation and reconstruction, which further heightened the monumental pressure and expectations then undergraduate student Maya Lin faced when designing the memorial. Born in Athens, Ohio, Lin is the daughter of political refugees who fled China shortly before Mao Zedong's foundation of the People's Republic and his Cultural Revolution. Lin faced an extreme amount of backlash for her identity, even though her design was chosen anonymously from over 1,400 submissions without any consideration of the designer's backgrounds. Robert Dubeck was the head of the entire memorial project, and in his book, Creating the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, The Inside Story, he revealed that the professional advisor of the voting committee proposed to stay on the project after Lin's design was chosen. He attempted to cut her out by using his own source firm to complete the entire design and construction process based merely on Lin's one drawing. He suggested that he would be the coordinating architect and Lin would work under him. This was implemented for a time, until Lin fought for the right to complete her own design and work with Dubeck to source her own firm. Comparing the treatment of minority voices from the past and the present accentuates the strides we as a society have made in acknowledging and celebrating the differences in people's backgrounds. Some critics found it ironic that a person of Asian descent was to design the American memorial of the Vietnam War. But there is no basis for discrimination against a person's race when it comes to the creation of architecture the universal language that inspires to resonate and evoke empathy. 
Extremist Ted Sampley stated that Lynn's proposal was underpinned by an un-American philosophy and that Confucianism played a pivotal role in her creative expressions. Aside from the factual inaccuracy, and that several generations of Lynn's family have been Christian Methodists, Lynn has also stated that she has not studied, nor does she have a desire to study specific philosophies. This form of racial and cultural generalization enforces labels on how a person is defined and perceived by society. The eventual success of the memorial would begin to balance out the sort of prejudice and promote a healthier dialogue about identity. In addition to diversifying racial representation, Maya Lin is part of the strong line of female architects that have influenced the architectural dialogue over the past half century. Historian Mark Jarzenbeck suggested that women, who were traditionally the domestiques that took care of the house and its interior architecture, could be considered the first architects and creators of many domestic environments. The late Zaha Hadid told the Financial Times, As a woman in architecture, you're always an outsider. And that it's okay. I like being on the edge. This sentiment reflects how architectural discourse is headed in a positive direction and highlights how much the discipline has evolved since the era of practice dominated by the white, Eurocentric male perspective. Although Maya Lin's role in redirecting the conversation about identity was significant, the symbolic significance of the memorial also cannot be understated. Lin stated that she considers monuments to be true hybrids existing between art and architecture. Similar to the literal and visual symbolism of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the Vietnam Memorial looks like a black gash on the pristine landscape of the National Mall. It represented the failure of the American government in its handling of the war and acts as both active memoriam and a warning. In addition to that, the controversy over the project also added a layer of irony to what is supposed to be a symbol of recovery. James Rustin puts it best when he describes the memorial as the war being fought all over again on the turf of memory and art. Symbolic gestures such as the choice of black granite and the act of burying into the ground forces visitors to confront death directly and reminds veterans of the trauma and vulnerability by opening up old wounds metaphorically. At the same time, the fact that the memorial is merely a black wall with names inscribed that lacks any identifying element eliminates any jingoism and almost suggests a barrier between the living and the dead that dehumanizes the emotional weight of casualty. Although it is debatable whether or not the memorial can fully heal wounds by opening mended ones, it does offer the opportunity for empathy by celebrating the lives of the dead, which elevates the simple granite wall to a universal symbol of inscrutability and morality. The Vietnam Memorial was the breakthrough project that launched Maya Lin's in mainstream architectural significance, but none of her later projects will carry the same amount of consequential weight than that of the Vietnam Memorial. It provided the opportunity for discourse and pivotal change in our culture by bringing race, gender, and identity into prominence.